Hello everyone, uh, welcome back to another one of our live streams. Uh, we have kind of a neat one tonight because we're going to be experimenting a bit with uh, what should have happened a little earlier this week, but the weather defeated me on, and that is the lovely thing called a check ride for your private pilot. Now, the reason I thought this would be a super fun theme for us is because it's a great opportunity for everybody to kind of fly all those things that they probably haven't flown for a long time. You know, we've been just concentrating on doing a lot of cross-country action and everything. We kind of forget that, you know, there is kind of another side to this as far as, you know, rules and regulations and everything else. So it should make it pretty fun. So uh, for those of you who wants to join us tonight, I'm um, flying the Cessna 172 or at Hartford Brainerd Airport. This is Kilo Hotel Foxtrot Delta. I know this airport really, really well. And as a matter of fact, there should be a building right here. That would be where I usually come out through. I grab myself a bag of Doritos and then I kind of come out here. Normally my airplane is actually parked over here, but I'm not complaining at all today. So we're going to run things as if this was an actual check ride. So I'm going to be using actual checklist. Uh, you can hear this right here. Good morning, Justin. Actually, good afternoon, Justin. Um, what we're going to be doing is uh, treating this as if this were an actual check ride. I'll be using actual checklists. I'll be going through actual procedures. We'll kind of simulate things. And of course, I'll try to announce everything early enough so those of you who are interested in experimenting will get you an opportunity to actually try the maneuvers out yourself if it's been a little while. So let's go ahead and uh, get started here. Oh, man. So this aircraft is way nicer than the aircraft I fly. I mean, look at this. I have an actual GPS on here. I don't have to rely on guessing like I normally do. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. So I am pulled out my little uh, notebook here, and I've got everything kind of ready to go. So let's go start at the tippy top and kind of work our way down. So first thing we do is we climb into the plane, we pop on the masters, we double check to make sure we have fuel, and we take the flaps and we slam them down to 20 degrees. It takes a moment to do, like I said, it does this little thing. Normally you hear all the gyros uh, spinning up and everything like that. It comes on, we go ahead and open up the outside door, uh, we take a look around, you know, we kind of do our little fuel check here, we walk in, we kick the brakes, I don't have wheel pants, wheel pants are expensive if you keep cracking them on bad landings. We check to make sure the flaps went down, you know, we give everything a wiggle. We'd make sure our little trim tab chilling here on the back is actually a trim tab properly. I'm pushing the trim button, but this thing is not moving nearly as much as it would. Check the flaps, and then we climb inside. You know, the first thing I do is I come around the back here, and I put my little uh, ADS-B receiver on the back. Everything else looks pretty darn good. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go flip us uh, to the next page here, and I'll keep on trucking. So the next thing we want to do is we want to set our mixture to the rich position, which it is. We're going to go ahead and set our carb heat to off. We don't have carburetor heat on because this is the nice SP version. Uh, we're going to go ahead and take the throttle and we're going to crack it in just a teeny bit. That looks pretty good. Avionics Master will be in the off position, which it is. We stick the key in the ignition, which it is. We go ahead and uh, put the brakes and turn them on. I'll go ahead and set the parking brake for this, make it a little bit easier for us. We're going to go ahead and set the fuel selector to the left fuel tank. Now, this sounds like an odd little kind of thing to do here, but it's actually really wise because it means we can test the systems separately from each other. Again, just a classic little thing. All right. So so we're going to prime it. Uh, we don't need to prime because it's pretty warm outside. We're going to turn on the bacon light, which is uh, my favorite little switch here. as we Bacon, because that's what that means. We're going to turn on the master switch. We're going to go ahead and make sure the area is clear. Uh, hey, dude, you got to move, man. You got to move. Oh, my, my car's here. Look around, make sure I'm not going to chop anybody to pieces. Yeah, it looks pretty good to me. So now what we do is we open the window. We yell the word clear. We reach down where that lovely key is, and we just sit there and crank. And the real world goes, blah, 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 blah. and then usually it dies, and you have to spend three or four times trying to get the darn thing started. Oh, it is just a vicious cycle. All right, we have a good start, and for some reason, you got to push the throttle. Look at this. It's like half the way in, and I'm barely getting 1,000 RPM. Man, this thing makes me crazy sometimes. We're going to double check to make sure oil pressure is coming up, which it is very slowly. We're going to make sure that we're at 1,000 RPM. We're going to go ahead and lean the throttle just a teeny tiny bit. Purpose here is, again, to keep lead out of your spark plugs. A lot of times when you do that, you have to increase the throttle just a little bit. All right, move to the next one. After start, we're going to flip on our master avionics switch. It's nice because all my lights come on. Uh, we're going to reset our fuel counter. I don't have to worry about the fuel counter in this thing. We're going to make sure our flaps is all the way up, so we're just going to slap that up again. We're going to go ahead and set our radios, and I'll go ahead and listen to the weather here. Uh, the weather, super-duper simple. I'm just going to go 1, 2, 6, 4, 5. Usually we do that on this radio as opposed to the other radio. It just makes things a little bit simpler. Ah, oh, this radio is so much harder to use than the one on the real plane. 4, 5. There we go. Swap, and we'll go ahead and turn on CAM2 and take a listen to the weather. Sky condition clear. Oh, yeah. Visibility, All right, we've set the altimeter correct. Two zero. That's a critical information. Delightful. So go ahead and shut that off. It's uh, providing me with all the lovely information I need to do. We check the weather. DG and altimeter set. Clearance. Oh, we're corrected. So at this point, of course, we call up ground. Uh, rain or ground. Skyhawk 9725. Get back at Hyper Jet Center. Requesting taxi the active with uh, information duly up. And they go ahead and read everything back. And uh, we go ahead and get this process going. So they basically tell us to go over to Hotel and Alpha, which is conveniently right behind us. So I'm going to go ahead and get us going right around here. All right. I'm pretty sure I shut that radio off. <laughs> 
go ahead and switch it to ground, pop over here, and we'll go ahead and do this. Now on the real plane, of course, you give it just the teeny, 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 tiniest tap of gas, and this thing gets rolling on you pretty much right away. So I'm going to go ahead and chop this person up here. I'm going to knock the wing off that person over there. We're just going to kind of come make our way over on this side. Uh, normally during this little uh, kind of run up, everybody's nice and quiet. They wouldn't be chatting like I am right now, but hey, well, whatever works, right? One thing we do need to do though, is we need to think about our emergency procedure in the event that uh, something goes bad during takeoff here. So we do a quick emergency briefing. Uh, basically, if we take off, uh, we accelerate. If we have an engine failure during the ground roll, I'm gonna use maximum brakes. If we get in the air and there's still runway receiving, uh, remaining rather, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, land the plane and hold the brakes as hard as I can. If I end on the grass, you know, it happens. Um, naturally, of course, we'll go ahead and swing around this way. We're gonna go right by this guy. Hey, dude. Get out of my way. They don't have a truck that nice at Hartford. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to head over to the little run-up area. Our next thing, if we take off and uh, we have less than 700 feet, I'm going to go pick a point directly ahead of me and land. And that's going to be the highway. Uh, for over 700 feet and we're up under 1,000, I'll probably take a long left turn and land at Rentalier, which is on the other side of the little highway or the uh, river. And, of course, if I have 1,000 feet, I'm going to turn the plane right around and I'm going to try to land on the crosswind runway 2-9-er. And we'll see exactly what happens. So I'm going to go ahead and point myself into the wind here. They said that the wind was more or less out of 2-4, so I'm going to go ahead and do a quick power donut. This is where I really wish I had a little bit better controls for this because I could jam on and go, wee, snap this thing all the way around. So I'm now pointing into the wind in a safe direction. All right, let's do it. Taxi checklist is good. Uh, roll and op check. Uh, control landing light should be flipped to the on position. I don't like turning the landing light on until we can see the runway. That's just kind of me though, but whatever. Uh, let's see here. Speed is good. Turning braking is good. Run up checklist. We're going to switch the fuel tank to the right side. The purpose of this, of course, is to make sure both fuel tanks are working properly. We're going to hold the brakes. Brakes are being held. We're going to make sure the flight controls are nice and clear so we give everybody a wiggle. Always look out your window when you actually do the wiggly process so you can confirm that everything is actually moving and it's not just uh, your imagination that's actually working on you right here. So after we do that, we're going to go ahead and get ready for the next part, which is uh, the best part, where you're going to run the engine up and make sure everything's working. Just like in the real plane, I have no room at all on my table here to work, but hey, oh well. All right, let's see. Your primer's locked. Throttle friction's loose. Trim set for takeoff. We'll go ahead and set the takeoff trim. I'm going to set it down here. We're just going to grab that and give it a couple claps until it's uh, correctly in the right position. Lovely. Uh, we're going to set the throttle and we're going to check everything else. I'm going to go push the throttle in. We should be getting about 1,700 around the revolutions per minute, comrades. Yeah, that's going to be pretty darn close. So before you do this, don't forget to put the mixture to rich, but we already hit a rich. Let's go ahead and check it so it's going to stabilize. We're going to go check all the gauges rear. Looks good, looks good, looks good, looks good. Looks good, looks good. We got enough vacuum. Let's go ahead and do a magneto check. We're going to go ahead and pop to this magneto. Oh, oh, and we just canceled our flight. If we lost 125 RPM, that would pretty much be game. So we're going to switch back to both. It should pop back up to 1700. We're going to pop it all the way down to right. Ooh, that's a lot of revolutions. According to this, I'm not supposed to use more than, let's see here, no, 125 max, so I'm good. I'm with intolerances, and the two are actually pretty darn close to each other. Suction gauge, engine gauge, throttle minimum. So we pull the throttle out and see if the engine dies. In the real world, it dies sometimes. Is it going to die? Uh, nope, it's not going to die on us. So I'll give it a couple gas, and we're good to go. Now we're ready for our before takeoff checklist. We're going to make sure our fuel selector is set back to the both position. We're going to double check to make sure it lights camera action. So we're going to set our transponder to the altitude mode. Like I said, we're not using our traffic control today. I'm going to go ahead and set this to our initial altitude, which is going to be 3,500 today. Like I said, we're heading out kind of west. We're not using GPS, so I'm actually going to disable the display completely because we're not allowed to cheat like that, but that's perfectly fine. This is good. That's good. This is good. That's good. This is good. All right. Before takeoff checklist is complete, let's get airborne. Give it a couple, a little bit of gas here. We're just going to come swinging around. Again, we're ignoring the fact that air traffic control would need a little bit more introduction than this. And we're accelerating the process just a teeny tiny bit, but we're going to have some fun along the way. Line myself up here. And that looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and confirm that the runway approach area is clear. I'm just going to go take a look this direction. Looks like uh, there's an F-18 somewhere over that way. I'm not going to worry about him too, too much. And now we're going to make our way onto the runway. And we're going to get started with this flight. Give it a little bit of gas here. Pop on. Uh, by the way, if we're doing a short field takeoff, we'd want to use all the runway we have available. Plus, we'd want to use just a little tiny bit of extra uh, flaps, of course, to kind of get us going here. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure everything works okay. Everything's in the green. One last idiot check for everything. Looks pretty good. I'm going to come just pop over here. Line ourselves up with the runway. I'm going to hold that brake right there. Get ourselves set up. We're going to confirm that all our gauges are in the green. I've got green, green. Whoa, whoa. That's okay. That will come into the green as fast as I can push the throttle forward. We're going to go ahead and apply full throttle, and we're going to get rolling. All right, folks, let's do it.
And the interesting thing is I gave it full throttle one time on this airplane, and what it did is instead of going up to full throttle, it went rah, rah, it did one of those kind of things, and it scared me pretty darn good. So there's 55 knots. We're going to go ahead and pull the nose up, and we're going to make our way on our journey here. This will be fun. Okay, so we're going to treat this just like it's the real thing. So we're going to go ahead and climb at VX until we're clear of obstacles, which I'm looking over my nose now. Everything looks pretty darn clear as far as that goes. We'll let the nose come down to VY in a second. Let's get the nose sink just a teeny tiny bit. And we'll go ahead and pick up to our cruise climb here. Fast head is uh, easily passing me there, but that's fine. Our initial heading is going to be right around 120 degrees in case you're curious. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, bring us over to the left here. We're turning just a little bit earlier. Generally, you want to get up to about five, 600 feet before you take this turn. But like I said, we have to make some liberties to make this a little bit easier. Go ahead and zoom out, and we're going to make our way on to our first waypoint. So the flight plan that they asked us to do for the check ride was to go out to Nantucket, which is about a 56-minute flight for us. Uh, don't worry, we won't ever get there in time. We're actually going to try to fly this kind of like by hand here. So there's our VY, about 75 knots. There's that lovely river. And like I was saying in my emergency briefing, there's Rensselaer Field right there, just in case things went really, really downhill. The nice thing about Rensselaer Field, by the way, is it gives us the opportunity to watch the football game, assuming they have one this afternoon. So it should be pretty good. It should be pretty good. All right, climbing on up, and we're going to start looking out for our waypoints. Looking out my nose now, there's a bunch of towers. I recognize those towers. But our first waypoint is actually going to be this neat little, basically, this funky dunk double lake. Looks like a pair of lungs, which is going to be coming up on our right. And like I said, we're just going to like go through the motions, and then we'll go go all our maneuvers and things like that. All right, get this thing all nice and leveled off. I think we need to come swinging to the other side. A little bit of a bumpy day today, but nothing unusual. All right, so that should get us mostly on course here. I'm going to go ahead and swing back to the right. And we're going to start looking around, trying to see what we can find here. There should be a highway right below us. Uh, I'm cheating a little bit. You can't do this. Oh, there it is. Nice. So there's the highway we're looking for. Good. Go swing us around this way. And we're basically going to start heading in this direction. Like I said, flight time for this thing will be right around an hour, I think, total by the time we get back home. And like I said, by the time we get back home, everybody will be like, woo! Give ourselves a little bit of up trim. The trim in simulator still sucks. It's not so much that the trim is bad. It's that the way you actuate the trim is just not how it is in a real plane. In the real plane, you have a little teeny tiny wheel right there. And you can see, like, it doesn't take anything to move it. And it really should be a little bit stronger. All right, we are on course. Getting bounced around pretty good here. Always feels nice to fly by hand. And we're looking for a lake. And, of course, which lake is it going to be? We've got to look out the There it is. So that is our first waypoint right there. It's that guy. Of course, like I said, in the real plane, you don't have this lovely thing. There's also that really, really nice building, and you also have that little highway right there kind of making its way that way. So it looks like we're pretty much right on time. Looking over at my little flight timer there, we're pretty good. If anything, we probably have to come to the right some more, and like I said, get back to that 120 degrees. Again, totally depends on the actual wind. And there's the other one. There's the double lake right there. That's the one we're hoping to find. So we're actually doing fine so far. All right, swing this way. Go ahead and put the nose down just a teeny tiny bit. And we are awesome. Cool. Now I can actually finally visit with everybody and see how you all are doing. All right. Let's see who we've got flying with us today. We have someone in perfect formation. I can't see who you are. Sorry. Uh, Fast Ted, welcome back. Laugh Rog, welcome back. Um, and we're in Michael. I don't remember. I apologize. Somebody has an R44. I'm impressed. Uh, CA Crawl, welcome. Uh, I haven't seen you before. Paper Ball, I don't think you're with us. And let's just take a look at USMC Cloner. I don't think you're with us also. So again, welcome, welcome, welcome. We'll have a ton of fun once we get to the maneuvers phase of this little trip here, where everybody's going to have to you know, do their best impression of doing slow flight and stuff like that. That should be interesting, <laughs> especially with the flight model and flight sim. See? It's, it's not really a pair of lungs as much as it is a pair of pants. Like somebody's kind of like walking really, really wide there. I think that's like a little like salmon pond or trout pond or something like that. But ideally, it should be right off our wing in the next 30 seconds or so. And that means we're pretty much on course. Yeah, there it is. Um, I think I am slightly north. I can't quite make it out, though. Again, I'm going based on what I can see here. There's the power line, so I can't be totally lost. Again, the nice thing about flying in an area I actually know is I actually kind of know it. And there is the stream, the expensive houses. And like I said, there's our first waypoint right, located right off my left wing here. If it's right off, yeah, not too bad, not too bad. And like I said, we're going to be leveling off in just a minute to pick up some speed, and we'll be on our way. There's our first waypoint, and we're about a minute late. That's probably my fault, though. Oh, well. All right, coming up on 3,500 feet. I believe that's Bolton Lake right to the south. There should be another highway. Again, in the real world, if you're not using GPS, you got to kind of play this game the whole time. Yep, there's the power lines. We're not lost. <laughs> not yet, anyway. Fun thing is, in the real plane, your seating's like this, I swear, when it comes to climbing. All right, go push the nose down, just like that. And we should be about 120 degrees-ish. Put that nose down into a nice little bit of trim. 
and there's the power lines you can actually see it right off the nose like right there where those two kind of pieces converge and there's a couple lakes you see one two three lakes right on our left the third lake is going to be our next waypoint for our flight here good time to go ahead and get our rpm all set up We're supposed to be using 75 percent power which for this altitude is something like 2600 rpm this is an sp though so we're going to go probably a little bit slower than we need to oh man it's so hard i have to actually work for this thing trimming the real plane is much easier than it is in the flight sim it just is all right got rpm a little too high still i'm gonna bring that down just another click and give it a couple taps and then i'll come visit with everybody out back autopilot's on let's go ahead and lock us on altitude let's go ahead and lock us on heading actually i don't think our heading was selected yet let's go ahead and set our heading Again, we can't use the autopilot on the actual private pilot ride. I just want to take a minute to kind of get myself all stretched back up here. Heading. Nice. Okay, cool. Make sure our RPM is set correctly. We should be doing about 2,600 RPM. That looks like 2,650 to me. Looks pretty good. Looks pretty good. Pull that throttle back just a tiny bit. It's funny. I changed liveries. My other one had like 75 hours in it. <laughs> just cool. All right, that's about as close to 2600 as I'm going to get. Good time to go ahead and play with the mixture knob a little bit. This plane's a little tough to set the mixture on. We're using EGT here. So what I like to do is I like to adjust the little red line here so I can see roughly where it's at. And then what I'll do is I'll actually push it and see what happens. Let's go ahead and pull the mixture out. Pull it out a bunch, usually about a half an inch or an inch or so to kind of get it started. And then we kind of go from there. I think the mixture went out too far. That is not the way this one behaves. Oh, nope, we were going right. Just watching the RPM slowly come up here. Oh, too much. And perfect. Nice. So you can see my RPM spike there, which means I've set the mixture correctly. It looks like our correct mixture for this altitude is going to be this line here. Cool. All right, so our next waypoint is going to be this uh, lovely lake right here. Um, I can see it. Uh, based on what I'm seeing now, I think we are pretty much right on course. And uh, the hard part is coming up in just a minute. I think you folks will like it. Uh, let's see here. Uh, real weather is real nice at the moment. Not VFR, but very nice. Okay, so in case you're curious what our weather actually looks like, I uh, will switch from high level to uh, actual live weather. So right now, it's, um, it's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a little... It's a little... There it is. <laughs> oh, yeah, you can't do a check ride in this stuff. It is beautiful weather, though. I mean, look at that. Oh, that is awesome. Yeah, I do not recommend taking a check ride when you cannot see where you're going. That would be terrible. Oh, that is so pretty. That is one thing this program does really, really well. Is, oh, <laughs> glad I'm not flying this plane, right? <laughs> all right, let's get ourselves all re uh, lined up here. Now, now we're way off course because we spent all that fun time uh, goofing off with the weather rather than paying attention where we're going. Uh, taking a look, our next lovely waypoint is this big old lake right here. I forget the name. I think this is Columbia Lake. It's the one up on my left. There's a shorter one, and the big one is, yeah, Columbia Lake. Now, in the check ride that uh, I had to all go through, like I said, we'll be going through when they finally uh, have weather that's nominal. Uh, they've asked us to, when we get to our second waypoint, which is, like I said, it's, it's literally this lake right here, uh, we're going to create a fake emergency, and then we're going to respond appropriately to this fake emergency. So we're just cruising, we're just cruising, all of a sudden, you know, your DPE or a pilot inspector says, oh, I think I'm having stomach problems, we got to get on the ground or it's going to get messy. So he'll go ahead and ask us, um, go ahead and uh, why don't you fly us over to Wyndham Airport. So Wyndham Airport, um, in case you couldn't see it from here already, is this uh, lovely piece of dirt that's right over here on the ground. Um, that's a nice thing. But in the real world, what we do is we actually call up air traffic control and ask them really, really nicely to go ahead and uh, give us vectors to that particular airport. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go check out what the vectors are. We need to take a left turn to 76 degrees. So I'm going to go ahead and snap us over to 76, and we're going to head right over to Wyndham Airport. We're going to treat this as if it's a fake, real, actual, not emergency. So we're going to turn our plane over, and we're going to get ourselves right down to the ground. Now let's go ahead and check the weather there on our way down. 133.67 uh, is the weather. 133, we'll go to 67. There we go. Uh, 675, close enough. We'll go ahead and swap. Go ahead and take a listen to the weather so we can check what runway we're supposed to be using here. Kilo India, Julia, Delta, automated, 284, runway 27, that's what I need to know. Visibility 9, sweet. So go ahead and uh, pick a random approach channel and we'll go flip back to the regular one. Shut that off. Good to go, good to go, good to go. All right, so it looks like we're going to be using uh, the runway uh, 27 today. So looking out the nose real quick, uh, it's a little rinky-dink airport. There's not a lot to this. Uh, so at this point, the DPE would be like, oh, go ahead and uh, set up for a short field landing. 
Now, short field landings, uh, for those of you who are a little out of practice, uh, basically what you do is you pick a target on the ground and you have to land within 200 feet of it. Now, it's 200 feet past the target on the ground. It's not 200 feet short of the target on the ground. So you have to kind of keep that in mind because if you were truly landing on a little, little, little runway, the concept there is we have to be really careful. Now, I'm not a big fan of this airplane, of this version of the Cessna 172 when it comes to short fields. Uh, the problem I have with this plane is I find that it tends to kind of uh, what's the best way to say it? It's just heavier than the Cessna that I usually fly, so it tends to drag and keeps floating forever and ever. But again, we're treating this like it's an emergency. We're trying to get down on the ground as fast as possible into that. Uh, normally, you'd be contacting the uh, local uh, 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 common traffic frequency, you know, be saying, hey, I'm coming into this, a left downwind for 27. But everybody behind me, uh, before we go ahead and land, I want you to pick a point on the runway, and that's going to be the point that you're going to put your tires down on the ground. Remember, you have to hit that point zero feet behind, uh, 200 feet above. Now, the easiest way to do it, for those of you who are curious, who have uh, never tried this one as far as target practice with an airplane goes before, the trick here is I usually use the second marker at flaps 20, and I use the third marker at flaps 30. So I'm sorry, the other way around. Flaps 20 is the third marker, flaps 30, or 40, I should say, for the second marker. So unfortunately for us, we don't have flaps 40. We have a nice new Cessna with flaps 30, so I'm going to use the third marker. Actually, you know what? Forget it. We're going to use the second marker and just be dangerous. So everybody, before you land, uh, just take a moment to say my target is going to be whatever on the runway and what I'm going to hit is going to be what I want to hit. Now, the big old boxes have actually zoomed on the runway a little bit. So everybody see the uh, big 1,000 footers, which are those long white lines, kind of a quarter of the way down the runway? That is a little far, but for those of you who are not feeling confident about this mover maneuver, it's a really, really easy place to land. Like I said, I'm going to be taking the second of the uh, little threshold blockers, so I'm going to have to really be on top of my game here. This will be interesting. <laughs> uh, traffic pattern, by the way, for those of you who are not sure, is going to be uh, 1,300 feet. So again, good luck, everybody. Let's see what you got as far as uh, good short field landing skills goes. So entering the traffic pattern, this is actually very dangerous. We actually should be hitting it at a 45 degree angle. So I'm actually gonna come out a little wide here and then I'm gonna come back in. One thing we do wanna do though, is we wanna reset our mixture. All the way in, and there we go. Nice mixture, cool. That looks a little better. I'm gonna lose another bit of altitude. We're gonna come in at a 45 degree angle. We'll take Route 6, which is that beautiful piece of road right there, in case anybody's curious. It's actually a Home Depot right there. We're looking at it. All right, let's enter into the traffic pattern. Cessna 9725 Quebec, left downwind for 27 Wyndham. No go, come swing around. Again, we gotta lose all this energy. If this were an actual emergency, we'd have to be very, very careful here. <laughs> it's my microphone, right? All right, entering to our little traffic pattern here. I'm going to come swing this way. Oh! All right, this is good. All right, got it just like that. So we got to slow down a little bit. We're coming a bit fast here. We're a little close to the runway, and that's okay. Like I said, traffic patterns, the key thing here is all about altitude. The key thing here is to be close enough to the runway if something goes bad that we can fix it. All right, there's going to be one tight traffic pattern. All right, nose back. We're going to put in our first notch of flaps. We're going to start our descent. Gonna have to come out just a little bit here because if I get a little too close, then it's gonna be a real pain in the butt. So, again, I'm gonna be landing on the second threshold marker. I'm not gonna be landing on the 27, I'm not gonna be landing on the big white bars. It's gonna be the second threshold marker. Left traffic, uh, left base for 27 Windham. Keep this plane right around 60. Uh, something I did not know, by the way, is on the Cessna 172, when I was first learning to fly 10 years ago, you had to come in at 65 knots, as I told you. Uh, little did I know, but that was just not accurate. Uh, you're supposed to come in about 60, because in the plane that I fly now, it's in miles an hour, and you come in at 70, which is barely 60 miles an hour, or 60 knots, rather. All right, short final, 427. All right, here's the trick. It's all in the approach. I hate the throttle on this, this aircraft in this simulation. It is not accurate. It is far more sensitive. All right, we'll let the nose come down. 60 knots is our approach speed. Like I said, we're aiming for, at least for me, I'm going to be trying to hit the second threshold. All right, we got our first runner up here. Oops, getting a little sinky. Good luck, Ted. Good luck. You can do it, man. Coast it in. Coast it in. Coast it in, Ted. Coast it in. Coast it in. A little high. You can do it, Ted. You can do it. Oh, 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 short. <laughs> Not so good. All right, nose up. Nope, give a little bit of power. A little bit of power, and... Whoop. <laughs> Eat it. <laughs> Got it. Nice. 
Ah, oh, that was excellent. All right, so that is our short field landing. We landed right on the point, and we stopped in less than the 400 feet that we, uh, the book says we're supposed to use. So I'm not complaining in the slightest. Woo, oh my gosh, I thought I was going to embarrass myself for a second here. Woo, all right, let's uh, taxi back, and uh, we're going to have some fun here. Oh man, that could have been bad. That could have been bad. You're welcome, Antoine. I've actually got something about Italy coming up, so I find that very interesting. I'd love to hear it, man. love to hear it. All right. So what we're going to do now is we're going to taxi back, and uh, we're going to do what they call a short field takeoff. So uh, what we just did is a short field landing, and we're going to do a short field takeoff. So I'm not... I, I did pounce on the ground. That wasn't soft. That was a pounce. So uh, unfortunately, I'm not... I, I didn't like that so much, but like I said, I'm kind of proud that I did okay there. And man, did I stop this plane in a hurry. So that is the point. All right, I see C-A-C-R-W-A-W-F. Welcome, sir. I hope you're, uh, I do not recognize you, but if I see you again, I will certainly say hello again. All right, here we go, here we go. All right, nice and easy, easy, easy. Go ahead and pause. Let's see how he does. Good luck, sir. Good luck. Where'd he go? Oh, there he is. Second marker, second marker, second marker. Easy, easy. No, 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 no. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Nicely done. Nicely done. All right, we're going to do a short field now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here. I'm going to go ahead and I'll put one click of flaps down. That was excellent. That was excellent. All right, so here's how you do short fields. So what we're going to do is we're going to get as close to the end of the runway as we possibly can. Uh, what you do not want to do is accidentally go halfway down the runway and say, oh, short field takeoff. No, 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 no. Get yourself really close. Go ahead and tap myself a couple breaks. I'm going to go ahead and uh, set this thing lined up like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look down. We're going to check to make sure our takeoff trim is set correctly, which it is. Check, check, chickity, check, chickity, check, chickity, check. Do, 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 10 degrees of flaps. Looks good, looks good, looks good. All right, here's how this one works. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold the brakes. I'm going to push full throttle. The plane is going to dive onto the ground, and you're going to let go of the brakes. And it's going to accelerate. And this is the shortest field takeoff this plane can possibly do. Uh, the killer here is when it's time to pull the nose up, you've got to pull the nose up. Like, you can't waste any time. Ready, on a mark, get set, rotate. So we're going to pull the nose up, and we're going to immediately accelerate up to our VX here, which in this plane is a little on the slow side. It's about 65 knots. So this is going to give us our best obstacle clearance speed, about 75 miles an hour, for those of you curious. So this is our VX right here. Don't touch the flaps. So we're just holding it until we clear the obstacle. Again, we're trying to take off in the shortest distance possible. I'm going to let the nose come down. I'm going to go ahead and gently lift the flaps. The plane's going to get really sinky. You have to grab the trim wheel on the real plane and just jam on it. And then we go up to our VY, which is right there at about 75. And now we're going to do one of my favorite kinds of landings, and that's going to be a soft field landing. So we're going to go ahead and treat this like a regular traffic pattern, kind of climb up. There is no target, no target at all for this particular landing. And that's one of the things I really, really like about it. So I'm going to go ahead and Zero run on things. All right, that's about uh, eight, 700 feet plenty. Go ahead and take my left turn. And we're going to go into a crosswind here. Left crosswind, two seven wind. Swing around. Hopefully everybody had a fun time with that last landing. Like I said, you guys uh, did a wonderful job there. That was awesome. Ooh, I'm getting carried by the wind a little bit here. All right, got to look out my window here. I really got to. It's so hard not to be able to just turn your head to see. Okay, we're looking for a traffic pattern altitude of about... 1,300 feet. I think it's supposed to be 1,246, but that's okay. All right, kind of taking my little left turn here. We're going to pop into the downwind as fast as we can. And looking pretty good. Getting bounced around pretty good here, which is really typical for this time of year in this part of the country. It's just bumpy. There's nothing we can do about it. And there's 1,300 feet. Go ahead and pull the throttle back. You don't have to pull it back too far. About 2,100 RPM, I think is what they tell me to use. But honestly, I just look out the window and I say, eh, close enough. <laughs> just kind of one of those things. All right, just looking at my window here, looking pretty good. Oh, man, I have flown one of these a few times. You have no idea. There we go. We're just going to kind of hang out the window. I don't feel like I need to get back inside the cockpit to see what I'm doing here. I can pretty confident I'm basically at my 1,300 feet here. So we're going to do a soft field landing. So to do a soft field landing, you have to put the plane on the ground as gently as possible. And when you land the plane, you have to keep the nose off the ground. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing I did last time. Go ahead and pop that first notch at the flaps down. We're going to let the nose come down. And we're going to just go ahead and start our standard little descent here. Like I said, this will be, be fun. This will be fun. Whoa, I just got passed. <laughs> so we're looking for the 45-degree angle here. The trick here is if you have a little monitor bezel, when the monitor bezel shows halfway right there, you just go ahead and take that left turn, pop down that 20 degrees of flaps, and then we start making our way back down to Earth. 
Oh, this is going to be good. All right. So the trick to the soft field, at least the trick that I've been using forever, uh, Aiden Hughes, if you want to join us, we're at Kilo India Juliet Delta, if you want to come um, pop in with us here. So the trick to the soft field landing is uh, basically what you're trying to do is don't take the power out. So that's a, kind of a weird thing. You're basically going to fly the plane onto the ground here. You're not going to just be kind of cruising like you normally do. Like I said, it's kind of a weird, it's, it's, it's odd. It's odd. So I'll get back to my 60 knots, which I have pretty well established there. I think I'm going to be a little off here. I'm also a little bit high, but that's fine. And there is my lovely runway. I just got short final 2.7. <laughs> All right, short final 2.7 went them. All right, there's the lovely runway. All right, so here's the trick. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up on a normal approach. Remember, you don't have to hit a certain point on the ground. You just have to come in soft. So whatever your throttle is right now, leave it there and pull it about half of the distance that it needs to go to get itself onto the ground. Whoa, whoa Fotenager, that, that was a little, that was a little, little. Getting a little slow. All right, there's 60 knots. You get over the runway here, and you're just going to fly the plane down to the ground. Fly the plane down to the ground. Look at that. Uh, hold the nose up. Hold the nose up. Hold the nose up. Hold the nose up. And we're not going to touch the brakes. Don't touch the brakes. Easy. Aw, oh, that's the stuff. <laughs> Whoa! -ho! Hey, that counts as two landings. I saw that. <laughs> so that's a soft field landing. Uh, basically, what you're trying to do is if you're landing on grass, you have to basically, ah, oh, like a pillow under the ground. Oh, that was sweet. I haven't done one of those in ages. Okay, so uh, now we're going to the fun part. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to take off again, and we're going to be traveling a little bit to the north. I uh, will do a soft field takeoff, which is absolutely one of my least favorites because it's so dangerous. Oh, here it comes again. Here it comes again. Oh, let's see what we got here. You can do it, man. You can do it. That was that last one was pff, that was awesome. That was literally within like six inches. <laughs> Sorry, Fold Noggle. That that that's rough. That's rough. I want to see this. He did a great job last time, so I want to see if he's got this again. Come on, man. You can do it. You can do it. Nose up. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Come on. You can do it. Oh, yeah, there it is. Ooh, nice. Nice. It definitely kind of went, uh-oh, uh at the last second, but man, I love it. Ah, it's flying. Flying real world can be fun sometimes. All right. So I'm going to head down here again, and I'm just going to get this thing all warmed up at the end of the runway. We're going to do a soft field takeoff this time. This is I call this the wheelie takeoff, and it's, it's really annoying in the real plane because the plane jumps. Like, that's the best way to describe what it does. So uh, let's go ahead and get, get us down here. I don't think anybody's on the approach right now. We're not going to be doing anything. We're actually going to be heading up north now so we can do some maneuvers to see how everybody's doing. All right, hold the brake just a teeny tiny bit. I'm just checking to make sure the approach is clear. The approach is uh, deliciously clear there, so I'm not going to worry about it too, too much. And we're just going to wheel under the runway. So soft field, go ahead and pop down one click of flaps. Don't forget to set your takeoff trim if you haven't touched your trim in a while. And again, this is going to be the same strategy. The difference here is I'm going to take my yoke. I'm going to pull it all the way into my chest. And we're basically going to pop the world's weirdest wheelie. I think that is alliteration. Yeah, it does do good takeoffs. Yes, it does. I love the VL3. That is an amazing airplane. All right, come around this way. Okay, so we're going to smoothly apply full power. All right, so again, I'm popping my controllers all the way back. So here's what happens. The plane gets really loose, and it comes off the ground really early. There it goes. So what we're going to do is we're going to hold it. Again, I'm doing a power wheelie here. It's going to come airborne. You have to push the nose of the plane forward. Accelerate up to your V. Oh my gosh, this takes more concentration. Get to your VX, and then we start climbing. Oh man, that is such a weird takeoff. I oh, love those, though. It's, oh, it's so satisfying to do those in the real world. In the real world, of course, your stall meter goes about a quarter of the way through it almost every single time. Yeah, I've had a lot of practice making that sound because I've made the real plane make that sound a lot of times too. All right, we're uh, well clear of obstacles. Let's let the nose drop. Pop up the flaps, and uh, now we're going to go head over to the maneuver area. This will be interesting. Uh, normally, we want to turn this soon. We wait till we get to 700 feet. But, you know, like I said, I wouldn't do that in the real plan. I'd wait. <laughs> Not in a rush. All right. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be fly up north a little bit here. Uh, there's a very, very large public uh, university here. Um, I assume you can get in, that is. Called the University of Connecticut. They have a really, really, really good basketball team. And what you're probably going to notice as we head in that direction is there's these little cranes off there in the distance. Uh, what we're going to be doing is that we're going to be doing our first of our maneuvers here. And that is going to be what they call a turnaround a point. 
Now, what a turnaround point is, is, is exactly what it sounds like. We're basically going to be trying to fly around a particular point without gaining speed or altitude. So that should be an interesting exercise if you've not tried it. Uh, people who don't use things like track IR, I feel sorry for you. It's really, really hard to do it otherwise. Yep, there's the school. So that's going to be it. And we've got some really good turbulence now. So this flight's going to be so much fun. <laughs> oh, no. Just having a tough night tonight. So when we do these particular maneuvers, uh, one thing that we want to kind of keep in the back of our heads here is the fact that our altitude is really, really critical that we know how high the ground is so that we can travel about uh, 800 feet, between 600 and 1,000 feet above it. Uh, we notice that the local altitude here, I believe, uh, puts us right around... I think give or take, I think it's uh, six, 700 feet. So if we do 1,600 feet, that's about peak. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and level off right here at 1,400 feet. And that should give us uh, plenty of room to go ahead and do this maneuver here. So what I'm looking for right now is uh, to slow down my engine. I've got this thing working out really, really hard. So this will be a good test for all of you uh, who've just been doing point to point for so many years in flight sim. There's our tower. See it? That's going to be our lucky uh, not so good point there that we're going to try to cross around. So the way we do this is pretty straightforward. What you do is you enter into cruise speed, and then you basically are just going to go around that tower three times without changing the shape of your donut. Now, I really enjoy this maneuver because it's one of those that if you get it right, you run into your own turbulence. If you get it wrong, it, oh, it's like falling across the sky. So make sure your trim is set way before you get to that tower, because um, otherwise it's going to be quite a project to get around this thing. Trying to play the trim here. It's going to be time to whack the autopilot on real fast and get the autopilot to set my trim for me. I wish. I wish. All right, looking pretty good. Just looking for, there's that tower. Interesting thing is, uh, last time I took this airplane over to where that tower, yeah, here's the university right here. Last time I took the airplane over to that tower, there was a bunch of, like, the marching band was uh, practicing in the field right below it. And, you know, it took about two revolutions before the entire marching band was all looking up at me, which I thought was pretty funny. <laughs> Just kind of things you remember. Oh, no, Reaper 1874, you can still join us. You have time. Like I said, we haven't done a stream in a while because life has been ridiculous. And uh, hopefully on the ride back, I'll tell you a little bit about my adventure that was almost a check ride. Now I have so many hours, it's ridiculous. It's awesome. It's awesome. Super fun, though. Super fun. Got some opportunities to do some things I would never, ever get to do had I got my license sooner, though. So I love it. All right, those are towers. So your job is to fly a donut around that without changing direction or speed. Or not direction, obviously. Altitude or speed. There we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure my power is set correctly. I've got about 2,500 on the revolutions, comrades. And all we're going to do is just going to do a power donut around this thing. Again, nothing too excessive here. Try to keep my altitude. It looks like my altitude. We're starting at about 1,300 feet. It's going to be my altitude. And let's get dizzy. So in the real plane, what I usually do is I'll actually kind of sit low in the seat like this so I can actually see the tower that I'm going around. So all you have to do is keep that tower in the same place. Now keep in mind, we have a pretty significant wind today, so this gets kind of fun. I call, my flight instructor always called this an inside-out maneuver because basically you spend half the time looking out the window, you spend the other half of the time looking in the window. But again, oh, we need to correct this. There we go. How are we doing here? We could probably have gone a slightly lower altitude, but that's okay. This is so much easier in the real world because you can just look. <laughs> I know, it sounds dumb. Whoa! Hello. Woo, this turbulence is actually pretty tough. All right, I don't mind it, though. I mean, it is what it is. Out the window, there's my tower. Come down a little bit. All right, just kind of enjoying it. I wonder if I can sit lower in the seat so I can see the thing better. This is why flying Cherokees is a good choice. There we go. There's my tower again. What we're trying to do is, like I said, keep us at about the same altitude. So I think I'm coming up on my first revolution, comrade. Let's go take a look. How are we doing here? Yeah, it looks pretty good. Nice. All right, looks pretty good. Ooh. <laughs> This is really tough. I should have come in at a lower altitude, or I should have come in from farther away, so I don't have to keep doing this to find the tower. Oh, there's the tower. All right, we're going to take one more revolution around the tower. I hope everybody else is doing a better job of it than I am. Uh, there's the tower again. Oh, man, I should have brought a low wing. I feel so jealous, man. I should have brought a low wing. Let's see here. I can see the tower. Yeah, I'm doing okay so far. Oh, man, you guys are killing me in those diamonds. I can't see. Oop, starting to get ahead of myself in my tower here. Man, are you dizzy yet? All right, looking out my window. It looks okay so far. All right, we're going to come back over to south, and then we're going to cruise on out because I think the maneuver has been completed. Uh, doing this one, by the way, I, I, I kid you not, I've flown this maneuver for 25 minutes straight before. And so my flight instructor's like, I think you've had enough. I'm like, yeah, I had enough about, you know, 15 minutes ago. All right, looks pretty good, looks pretty good. I'm going to come back around like that. Whoa. And we should just about be to south, I think. 
And we're doing okay. We're still 1,300 feet. And that should do it. Oh, nice. All right, folks, uh, how'd you all do? How'd you all do? Nice and dizzy? <laughs> Your propeller's not spinning. That scares me. All right, now for everybody's least favorite parts. So what we're going to do now is we're going to get a little bit of altitude underneath us, and now we're going to do all the dangerous maneuvers. Uh, this is the fun stuff. This is I, I love this stuff. We're going to skip the uh, points, uh, the uh, S-turns, I should call them. Those are super-duper fun, but uh, they're a little tough for us to do. Because, like I said, it's really, really difficult to see where you're going. Yeah, Reaper, like I was saying, if you want to go to uh, Kilo India Juliet Delta, all you do is got to come north. You can't miss us. We're a giant blob of airplanes. All right, looking pretty good. We're just going to go ahead and climb up. Hopefully everybody's not dizzy now. We're going to try to get at least, uh, let's call it 3,500 feet underneath us here. Of course, it's going to be sea level, not ground level. Ground level, it's only about 2,500 feet. Should do some ground handling and get vertical. <laughs> All right, climbing nicely. Got to love this plane. It is uh, not what I would call a sprightly performer, but hey, you know, it could be a 152. This would be a much, much longer flight than 152. Uh, Bala Jurassic, uh, welcome to joining us. Let's see, fast head. Uh, you're going to have to come make your way towards the west a little bit there if you're going to catch back up to us. Uh, Roach Dog, you're just chilling in an Airbus A320, so I'm not going to worry about you too much. All right, we're climbing pretty smoothly here. We've got a little less than 1,000 to go. That's about a minute 24 at 5. So the next phase, after you've done all of that fun stuff, you've done your short, you've done your soft, you've done a couple of your little donuts there, you usually you switch either to instrument mode or you switch to what I like to call the slow flight phase. So we're going to go do the slow flight stuff, then we'll do some instrument, and then we'll fly back home, and that will be our little check ride here. Again, I wish it was this short and easy in the real world. You have to get grilled for two hours first, and then they're like, hmm, you can show me how you fly now. It's just kind of fun how that works. All right, Bala Jurassic, you're going to come to your left a little bit if you want to come catch up with us here. Pulling that nose up, uh, about, yeah, 28, 3,000, 2,900. Yeah, we're doing fine. How are we doing on gas, by the way? Yikes! All right, so the first maneuver we're going to be doing, uh, about 500 to go, is going to be called slow flight. So what you're going to do with slow flight is you're going to pretend the plane is coming in for a landing, and you're basically going to slow it down to nothing. Um, when I was first learning slow flight 10 years ago, we basically did it to the stall horn, and we left it at the stall horn the entire duration of the slow flight. I really enjoy slow flight because it's just... Awkward, and when the wind is strong, you actually go backwards, and that's actually kind of satisfying, not going to lie. So we're going to go ahead and cruise up uh, 200 feet to go, and then we're going to basically pop us into slow flight. The technique I like to use is I just slap the flaps all the way down and pull the throttle to about mm, 65 75% seems to do the trick. Alrighty then, 400 to go. And that should do it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put the flaps all the way down. The plane's going to go on you. Pull the nose back, and we're going to fly the plane as slow as we can get it. This is so much fun. All right. Trim is your best friend. All right. 45 knots. And slow the plane down. <laughs> Look at how slow this thing's going. Oh, man. I love this. I'm actually going a little fast, not going to lie. I'm doing 50 miles an hour. This is a 43 knots here. So the goal of slow flight, of course, is not to slow down past the uh, low point here. But you can see I am now doing uh, 45 knots. Oh, massive Ferrari stalled. Uh, Simon, you're way too good at this, man. Okay, so I feel like I'm like balancing a helicopter right now here. So what they do is they slow you down to nothing first, and then they say, go ahead and turn the plane. So the trap here is you want to go slow but you don't want to tilt the plane. If you tilt the plane too much, you are going to fall right out of the sky. I love this. This is so awkward. Oh man, doing this like in a Cherokee is like, it's such a trip. I'm gonna give it just a little bit more thrust here. We're starting to get a little sinky. Oh man, this is so weird. My legs are like shaking, trying to like keep this perfectly balanced there. But yeah, I just, I love how slow you can get this plane. Now, I've had winds so strong, I've had negative speed where the aircraft would actually go backwards. Like I said, I'm just pulling myself into the west here. I'm going to give myself a little bit more thrust. I'm at like almost 75% throttle here, and I still feel like I'm starting to sink. All right, there we go. Slow and steady wins the race, right? Okay, that's west. I think it's west, right? Yeah, it's west. Good. So now we're facing west, and uh, we're still going nice and slow. So what they do next is after you do that, they say go ahead and climb up to like uh, 5,000 feet or 4,000. So you get full throttle. <laughs> yeah <laughs> that that's what happens in the real plane too by the way you, you you go up slowly 
very, very slowly. So what he does is he basically sits here and tortures you to see if you can concentrate hard enough about not losing the plane. Uh, by the way, make sure your rudder is in the correct position. And what he'll say then is like, okay, that's good, that's good, you've climbed high enough. So you go ahead and level the plane back off. He's like, go ahead and demonstrate and approach stall. You're like, okay, approach stall. So you pull the throttle back. The plane starts whining. And it drops. So we're going to gently fly up. Bring up the next notch. Arrest the stall. Come on. Come on. Get up to about VX. There it goes. Sweet. And then we go ahead and fly out of the stall. Woo. Oh, man, that's smart. So next what we're going to do is we're going to do what they call a departure stall. A departure stall is when you basically go up too steep as if you were just taken off. Um, we're going to do stall up to the warning of a stall. So that means the moment you hear the thing creep at you, go ahead and I'll let the nose down. So I'm going to apply full throttle. We're going to go ahead and stand on our tail. And we're listening for the beep because that means it's time to come back down. There's the warning. We let the nose come back down. And that's one of the departure stalls. Uh, the other departure stall, of course, is much more fun. So we're going to give it full throttle again. We keep our plane nice and coordinated. That's the warning. And there's the stall. <laughs> I love that. I don't know why. There's just something very weird about it. In the real world, by the way, the plane shakes and buffets and shakes and buffets and kills you just all over the place. Woo! Oh man, I actually had to work for that. So what we're going to do now is we're going to do the steep turn. Uh, the steep turn is uh, really straightforward. Uh, basically what you're going to do is you're going to take a turn that is roughly 45 degrees. In case you're curious what that looks like, if you look at your little needle right there, 45 degrees is the last line on the right there before we start getting into the brown. So uh, we're going to go pop that. We can't do a 90 degree turn in a Cessna 172. We just don't have enough energy. I'm sure if we were doing like $1.40 or something like that, we could probably do that. All right, so we're facing west. Uh, we want to pick an obstacle on the ground that's going to act as our point of reference. I see a couple lakes out there. I'm going to call those my point of reference. Left turns are easier than right turns. I'm currently facing west. I'm currently at 4,000 feet. So what you do is you take the throttle. You're going to push the throttle forward a little bit. You're going to tip the plane. And you're basically going to pull back as hard as you've ever pulled back on a controller. And what you do is you sit here like this. So uh, how's the weather? Uh-huh. How are the kids? Nice. Uh, what do you think of the uh, cookies? Are you like an Oreo cookie fan, or what do you think? Okay, sounds good. And what you do is you go ahead and fly back out of it. You pull the throttle back to what it was, and there you've executed yourself your steep turn. Now, the interesting thing is that was a left-handed steep turn. If you have a particularly cruel DPE, what they'll do is they'll say, could you do a right-handed steep turn? I'd be like, all right, I'll do a right-handed steep turn. So I do the same thing. And notice how difficult this plane is on a right-handed steep turn. You have to basically... Oh my gosh, I have to work for this. This is much harder. Again, try it if you don't believe me. All right, there's West. Oh, that was hard. And we lost about 20 feet, which is legal, but sketchy. <sighs> Not bad. So, so far we're doing well. So far we're doing well. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim the plane out and now pretend we're cruising. So this would be the scary part of the check ride. What they would ask us to do is they'd ask us to go ahead and demonstrate our instrument flying skills. So obviously we can't demonstrate instrument flying skills without getting some instrument conditions. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over here, switch this to overcast, and that's pretty bad. Now let's try broken clouds. Oh yeah, there we go. Now I can't see a thing. And basically we're gonna go ahead and demonstrate our instrument skills here. And you know what, that's not bad enough. Let me make it worse. All right. Grab this one. There we go. More. <laughs> instrument mode go. So there's a couple different things uh, they do during instrument mode here. Uh, the first thing that they're going to try to do to you is they're going to try to disorient you as much as possible. So uh, to disorient yourself as much as possible, uh, the trick here is called uh, unusual attitudes is the name of the particular maneuver. It's one of my all-time favorite maneuvers because it makes you like the worst vertigo you'll ever have in your entire life. So what you're going to do is you're going to intentionally put the plane into a situation where it's not safe. You know, if I'm looking down at my map and I don't realize that, you know, I'm pulling up or pulling down or something like that, you know, this would be a great time to go ahead and simulate that effect. So what you do is you turn the plane, you look straight down, and then you're just going to wiggle your controls a lot. And you're going to go ahead and press your uh, trim button a little bit. And you're going to go ahead and hold regular controls some more. And you're going to kind of flip it upside down. You're going to kind of do one of these things. And you're going to kind of do one of those. And then you go ahead and look up and you fix it. Whoa! 
and then we're going to go ahead and correct it as fast as we can. I could see that it was pointing towards the brown, so I went and pulled the throttle back, I went ahead and leveled off, and now we've recovered from our usual attitude. Of course, uh, my trim is all really, really messed up, and we go ahead and fix it. So the poor flight instructor guy or the DPE does that to you two times to basically see if he can get you to puke. Like I said, I think it's one of the most fun things ever. So <laughs> it doesn't bother me very much. So the next thing they like to do is they like to uh, go ahead and see how good you are at not getting lost. So what they'll do is they'll say, go ahead and open up your sectional. I've got my sectional on my lap right now, actually. And what they'll say is, could you identify where you are? So the typical method of identifying where you are, if you're not working with the GPS, is you have to use a VOR. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the plane nice and stable. Again, as gentle, stable as you can possibly get, because there's gonna be a lot of head down time as we try to navigate these things. So I'm gonna get the plane nice and stable. Like I said, try to get it as close to steady as you can get it before you try to do this stuff, because you're gonna find the plane is gonna wanna go everywhere when you're not paying attention. Oh my gosh, come on plane, trim out. Yeah, I, I miss my real trim. It's, it's just so much easier. I might get annoyed at it and flip on the autopilot. I'm so annoyed. Anyway, so what you do is you level the plane off. Uh, you get everything as trimmed out as you can, and then you have to find out where you are. Fortunately, I memorized most of the frequencies of the stuff around me. So what I have to do is look over at your, check your stuff, come back here and play with this. 114, look back at your stuff, come back here. 114.90, we need to confirm where it is. This is HFD. We're going to flip on nav one. We're going to listen. That's disappointing. You should be able to hear the beeps and boops. Uh, one thing you have to do on the GPS that I've seen before is you have to actually turn on the volume for the thing. I'm not going to fight it, though. I'm just going to assume it identified properly because this is right here. After you do that, what you would do is you look down at your chart, which is between my leg here, and uh, we go ahead and play this game to try to identify where we are. Again, you can't lose more than 100 feet here. So I'm just going to keep... Oh, we're to the... Do... We are do... Uh, what do you want to call that? We're 70... Uh, 85 degrees. Whoa, losing altitude. Um, 85 degrees away from Hartford VOR at a distance of 5.7 nautical miles. Yes. So then you'd be like, yeah, I won. So he's like, good. No, no, that was good. And you were able to identify without losing control of the airplane, which always makes me feel a little tiny bit better as well. Because you're like, ah, oh, does that mean we're done? And they're like, yeah, that means you're done. You can return home. <sighs> All right, sweet. Let's go home. So what we're going to do now is we're going to head back over to Hartford. So I'm going to set my weather back to what it was before. Boing. And if my calculations are correct, uh, the airport that we started in, apparently helicopters come out to come see us, should be basically right in front of us. Uh, it's going to be, yep, right off our 12 o'clock. Yep, there's the airport. Ha <laughs> ha, not bad. Not bad at all. So what we're going to do is we're going to fly in, and we're going to treat it as if this is a real situation. So what we want to do is we want to go ahead and get the weather and all that other good stuff. So what we'll do is we'll contact Hartford real fast. Should pretty much be right off our 12 o'clock. Uh, the frequency there, I'm just going to look it up real quick. Go up to our little radio, communication 2, nearest airport list. We're going to do Hartford Brainerd. We're going to go ahead and select the ATIS. We're going to listen to the weather. Brainerd Airport, information India, 21000. India. Wind 28410. Visibility, niner. Sky condition, clear. Temperature, 15. Dew point, 13. Altimeter. Brainerd Tower, Sky 9725, Quebec. Pressing full stop in India. Of course, you could never do that in the real world. What would happen is you'd call them and you'd have to go ahead and tell them uh, what your intentions are, but first tell them where you are. You know, return to the east, uh, requesting full stop in India. Brainerd Tower. Altimeter 29 or decimal 9 or 2284 at 10. Make left traffic runway 20. Left traffic 20. Skyrocket 9725, Quebec. Delightful. So that's it. Now we've completed our little uh, unbelievably abbreviated check ride there. Uh, we did some maneuvers. Uh, the maneuvers we did skip include the S turns, uh, which require something very straight. Uh, I don't know about you, but there aren't really any straight things, at least in my state. There's probably states that have nice straight lines out west and things like that. But for us, our, the straightest we're going to get is like sections of highways sometimes or like rivers sometimes. But generally we don't. And of course, the other maneuver is going to be the rectangular pattern. We skipped the rectangular pattern only on account of the fact uh, we didn't need to because we did a traffic pattern, which was a rectangular pattern. All we have to do now is to put this plane down gently on the ground, and that should be about it. Woo! Oh, that was a project. I feel like this is one of the few flights I can't spoil by crashing into a body of water. I feel like uh, we've all worked way, way too hard tonight for that. All right, I just kind of kind of enjoy my flight, kind of cruising back in here. I never shut it off. Uh, apparently, people like to really, really tailgate around here. A massive Ferrari took out the Cirrus. Good choice. And as I've said before, I have nothing against the Cirrus airplane. It's a really, really neat airplane. I wish someday I could fly one myself. It's just, you know, <laughs> one of those things. I'm jealous. 
All right, this is going to be fun. There's a lovely city of Hartford. There's Rensselaer Field and an emergency. You can always stick it down there. Speaking of an emergency, we forgot to demonstrate something, which is an emergency descent. There we are. And now we're almost traffic pattern altitude. Nice. <laughs> Key thing with emergency descent, don't forget the rudder pedals. Now the neat thing is the real plane, the whole plane goes like that when you start doing that. It's kind of cool. Now we're going to line ourselves up with the runway here. It should be right off for 12 o'clock if my calculations are correct. Yep, there's a runway right there. Uh, traffic pattern altitude here is 1,018 feet. We just use 1,000 feet because, you know, I'm lazy. So I'm going to go ahead and descend a little bit. Go ahead and check. Look at how much fuel we use tonight. I feel like this is the most work we've ever done in a Cessna 172 on a live stream. So I hope you appreciate the labor here. <laughs> All right, line ourselves up. Kind of take a look at the window. Looking pretty darn good. There's the control tower. They asked us into a left downwind. I think this is left downwind. Left downwind. Left traffic. Yep, left traffic. So left downwind. So in Hartford, uh, what they asked us to do is to call the midfield. Uh, we're not supposed to just land kind of willy nilly. That is not a runway, by the way. Um, no landing willy-nilly. Uh, we always call midfield and they tell us what to do. I can't tell you how many times I've flown into this airport and uh, they basically called back and said, oh, do this, this, this. And it's like, uh, okay. Or when I'd be on final, they say, call when you're on final. You turn into final and you're right about to call them to say I'm on final. And they call you and say, you're on final. And it's like, yeah, you didn't give me a chance, chief. Just kind of fun, that's all. So we're going to enter into a traffic pattern. Uh, normally, this is going to be a left and 45 degree entry. We're basically doing a 90 degree at the minute. Uh, we're just going to cut across and we're going to fly right over there. That is a lovely, lovely, lovely uh, uh, Pratt Whitney is right down there. They make uh, engines, especially jet engines. I'm sure you've flown some kind of aircraft at some point powered by a Pratt Whitney engine. Just kind of a neat little Connecticut point of pride there. All right, let's safely land this plane. So this is going to be your normal landing. This is the only time you get to do a normal landing in the whole flight. Normal landing means you have to be plus 200, plus 400. I'm um, sorry, minus 200, plus 400 on the landing point. So this is everybody's chance to go ahead and do the most dangerous landing. Show me your landing on the giant 2-0. I want to see if anybody can do it. So go ahead and land on the 2-0, which is a tremendously dangerous way to land this plane. But just for a kind of a fun little way to end this night. See, they haven't given me permission to land yet. Uh, guys, guys, there it is. Clear to land 2-0. Clear to land runway 2-0. Delightful. Thank you, sir. Clear to land runway 2-0. Clear 2-0. Ugh, this thing is just so hard to keep stable. It's just a flight simulator thing. It makes you a better pilot, though, trust me. Come on, man. There we go. All right, let's descend. There we go. There's Route 84. If you remember, we uh, took off, and uh, we went and said hello to that. Come swing around this way. And yeah, we're just going to go ahead and stick this thing down on the ground. Like I said, everybody show me your landing on the numbers. Uh, give me a nice uh, World War II landing there. All right, come swinging around. Uh, Moby Mobius, welcome back, by the way. I think I missed you earlier. All right, let's swing us back. Go ahead and give this thing some throttle. I really wish they'd fix the throttle on this thing. That's just not what this plane does. Either that or the engine's just not set up properly. That's okay. One of these new high compression engines. And go ahead and take a left. Moby Mobius has an unfair advantage because he's flying an H-125, which is a helicopter. <laughs> not fair. Not fair at all. All right, everybody show me you're landing on the 2-0. This would never be required in a flight, especially at this airport where it's very, very dangerous because of how close uh, the displaced threshold is. I don't know if I'll be able to pull this off. I'm going to try. I'm going to try. Oh, my gosh, I'm getting slow. No, 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 no. That's how you run a check ride, by the way. There's my big old number two zero, giving a little bit of throttle. Oh man, this is gonna be fun. Let's see if I can do it. Okay, this is so sketchy. Don't do this. Ironically, it'd be actually easier if I just sort of coasted in. All right, pull the throttle back. Let's see if I can get that big old number 20 there. Pull the throttle back. Uh, coming a little fast. Uh... <laughs> I would have bounced that plane so bad. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> that, yeah, like that. Yeah, that, that that's what it would have been. <laughs> Please don't do that in the real flight test. It's a great way to get in a lot of trouble. All right. Now we got to call up ground and let them know we're here. 121.6, Skyrock 9725, Quebec. 
Oh man, that was sketchy. Six red, six four. All right, I just got to get my tail clear here. My tail's clear. Tail's clear. Nice. Ah, uh, taxi to Hartford Jet Center. Brainerd ground red. Six four request taxi to parking. Red six four taxi to General Aviation. Alpha Echo. Now, here's the funny thing. This is Alpha. There is Echo's like down there. They've all completely done goofs. Let's go. Uh. Uh. <laughs> does not compute. Um. My chart says this is Delta. Oh well. Let's go park the plane and uh, let's uh, call it a night. All right. Slow down just a little bit. Man, that was fun. I forgot how much fun it can be just doing, like, general aviation shenanigans. i give myself a little bit of break here. I'm going to pop it around. Should have done this in the Warrior. I could never land the Warrior that accurately, though. I really need the 172 to be able to land it. Also, sorry, wheels. I came in so hard on that last one. And I've been marshaled. All right, let's go ahead and pull out my checklist again. Oh, i got to find it on the floor. Give me just a second to pull it out. All right, so uh, we've reached the QA stage. Uh, does anybody have any questions, comments, or suggestions for future movies? Uh, let's see here. Ch -ch 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 -ch. After landing, car heat, landing lights, flaps up. I think we did all that already. Flaps up. We're going to shut off our avionics master. We're going to go ahead and pop off our landing lights. We're going to go ahead and slowly pull this out until the engine stops. All right, uh, I always like to get to this point. Uh, does anybody have any questions, comments, or uh, suggestions for future films? Like I said, I'm always looking for ideas. I actually was poking around the Microsoft forums today, and some people gave me some really, really cool ideas for videos. Like I said, I'm not going to crash into the water this time. That was way too much work to go smooshing into the squooshing. <laughs> Let's go ahead and take our picture now. I'll go ahead and uh, grab my view from behind. Boop. Let's see who's with us. All right. That was a great little turnout there. I'll zoom out just a bit. I love this. This thing's cute. I love how there's like some more traffic here on this road than there actually is like in all of Hartford. Which is uh, pretty impressive. I want to see, is anybody coming in late? Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. we can't forget this chap. Oh, I got to see this. All right. Right where my mouse is. Right where my mouse is. You can do it. Oh, slow. He's getting slow. Easy. Easy. <laughs> Excellent. Oh, oh man. I felt that one in my spine a little bit. It's the uh, sympathetic pain here. All right. Let's go ahead and take a picture. And again, uh, thank you all for joining us tonight. Sorry it's been so long since we've had a live stream. Uh, real world flying and real world life has been ridiculous lately um you really it's it's been nutty it's been nutty you know between uh you know folks doing things and uh, life and having to work on weekends it's been ridiculous but again we were still able to get enough movies and i did make sure we got that guy right there welcome back but other than that have a great night everybody uh, if you want to see something real funny watch this Wee. <laughs> uh. <laughs> just fun to play with have a great night everybody and i uh, hope to see you again in the future enjoy